From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Friday, December 16th, 2022. Hackers target Japanese politicians with new mirror stealer malware. A hacking group tracked as Mirror Face had been targeting Japanese politicians for weeks before the House of Councillors' election in July of this year using a previously undocumented credentials stealer named Mirror Stealer. The campaign was discovered by ESET, whose analysts report they could piece together evidence thanks to operational mistakes made by the hackers that left traces behind. The hackers deployed the new information stealing malware along with the group's signature backdoor, Load Info, which communicated with a command and control server known to belong to the APT10 infrastructure. Crooks use HTML smuggling to spread QBot malware via SVG files. Researchers at Talus have uncovered a phishing campaign that distributes QBot malware using a technique that leverages scalable vector graphics images, SVGs, embedded in HTML email attachments. HTML smuggling, as it is known, is a highly evasive technique for malware delivery that leverages legitimate HTML5 and JavaScript features. Malicious payloads are delivered via encoded strings in an HTML attachment or web page, and the malicious HTML code is generated within the browser on the target device, which is already inside the security perimeter of the victim's network. FBI charges six and seizes domains linked to DDoS for hire service platforms. The U.S. Department of Justice on Wednesday announced the seizure of 48 domains that offered to perform distributed denial-of-service attacks on behalf of other threat actors, effectively lowering the barrier to entry for a malicious activity. The six defendants have been charged with running various booter or stressor services, as well as violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. These websites claim to provide testing services to assess the resilience of a paying customer's web infrastructure and are believed to have targeted several victims in the U.S. and elsewhere, such as educational institutions, government agencies, and gaming platforms. Lego BrickLink bugs let hackers hijack accounts and breach servers. Security analysts have discovered two API security vulnerabilities in BrickLink.com, Lego Group's official second-hand and vintage marketplace for Lego bricks. BrickLink is the world's largest online community of Lego fans with over a million registered members. Two API security issues discovered by Salt Security could have allowed an attacker to take over members' accounts, access and steal personally identifiable information stored on the platform, or even gain access to internal production data and compromise internal servers. The first one is a cross-site scripting flaw in the Find Username dialog box of the Coupon Search section, and the second flaw was located on the Upload to Wanted list page, where users can upload XML lists containing LEGO parts that they wish to find and purchase. And now a word from our sponsor, Fortra. The cybersecurity landscape is full of single solution providers, making it easy for unexpected cyber threats to sneak through the cracks. That's why Fortra is creating a stronger, simpler strategy for protection. One that increases your security maturity while decreasing the operational burden that comes with it. Fortra's integrated, scalable solutions help customers face their toughest challenges with confidence. You can learn more at Fortra.com. That's F-O-R-T-R-A dot com. Microsoft's EU data boundary plan to take effect January 1st. Following up on a story we brought you yesterday, Microsoft on Thursday said it will begin rolling out the first phase of its European Union data boundary plan from January 1st, 2023, that will allow customers to store and process their customer data within the EU. The move comes two days after the EU Commission said it had officially begun the process of approving the EU-US data privacy framework. Under the first phase of the plan, companies that use Microsoft products and services will be able to store and process their customer data within the EU. Microsoft has included Azure, Power BI, Dynamics 365 and Office 365 under this first phase. NSA says Chinese hackers are actively attacking Citrix Flaw. Following up on a story we brought you in Wednesday's You Should Probably Patch That feature, the NSA said on Tuesday that it believes a Chinese hacking crew known as APT5 has demonstrated capabilities against an application delivery controller made by Citrix. Citrix released an emergency patch to fix the vulnerability on Monday and said that, quote, exploits of this issue on unmitigated appliances in the wild have been reported, end quote. 
The NSA has historically preferred to monitor such attacks rather than publicize them, but in recent years it has grown more proactive in sharing intelligence on attackers such as APT5. Of special note in this story, Alan Liska, an intelligence analyst at Recorded Future, said, quote, Combined with the recent Fortinet vulnerability, it could make for a lousy Christmas. The two are equally bad in terms of being remote code execution and pre-auth. They are also both devices that tend to be publicly accessible from the internet, which means bad guys are likely already scanning for potential victims. End quote. ChatGPT owner OpenAI projects $1 billion in revenue by 2024. ChatGPT, the new chatbot that is the talk of Silicon Valley, can spit out haikus, crack jokes in Italian, and may soon be the scourge of teachers everywhere facing fake essays generated by the AI-powered technology. The research organization, co-founded by Elon Musk and investor Sam Altman, and backed by $1 billion in funding from Microsoft, is expecting its business to surge. The startup has already inspired rivals and companies building applications atop its generative AI software, which includes the image maker DALL-E 2. OpenAI charges developers licensing its technology about a penny or a little more to generate 20,000 words of text and about two cents to create an image from a written prompt, according to its website. UK arrests five for selling dodgy point-of-sale software. Tax authorities from Australia, Canada, France, the UK and the US have conducted a joint probe into electronic sales suppression software, applications that falsify point-of-sale data to help merchants avoid paying tax on their true revenue. An announcement last Friday from the Joint Chiefs of Global Tax Enforcement, known as the J5, states that the probe resulted in the arrest of five individuals in the UK. The software allows retailers to keep a separate set of books and launder money in one transaction. J5 Chief and Australian Taxation Office Deputy Commissioner John Ford described as an example how a customer might order a $60 steak and a $100 bottle of wine, at which point the software changes the transaction, recording it in the point-of-sale system as a $10 bowl of chips and a $4 bottle of soft drink. Remember to join us later today for our Super Cyber Friday discussion all about hacking non-traditional cyber risk. We'll be digging into the risks that we need to be aware of that don't fall under our normal purview of direct business risk, what visibility we can get into third parties, and how we can use this visibility into risk to make better business decisions. The live stream starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, so be sure to join in on the fun. And then at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we host our Week in Review show, giving you all the top cybersecurity headlines from the week in about 20 minutes with a healthy dose of commentary from one of our expert CISO guests. Just head on over to CISOseries.com and click on the event drop-down to register. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.